In this tutorial, we will take a look at adding a calculated column to a list or library. Calculated columns display the results of mathematical or logical formulas. When you add a calculated column to a list or library, you create a formula that includes references to other columns, specific values, operators such as subtraction, addition, multiplication, division, and built-in system functions such as the today function to indicate the current date. Here's a list of the eight categories of system functions available in SharePoint. In this video, we will see a brief example of using formulas to perform a simple mathematical equation, calculate with dates, and manipulate text. We'll start with our first example to create a basic mathematical equation. We're working here on the accounting site and we'll be working in the list vendor expenses. We will add a column to calculate the difference between the estimated amount column and the actual amount columns. To get started creating this calculated column, click on the list tab and then click on create column. First thing I need to do is give the column a name and I'm going to call this cost variance. And then I'll select calculated as the type of column I'm creating. Down in the formula box, we need to enter the calculation. We can either build a formula or use one of the many built-in functions. In this example, we will build our own formula. So you start by clicking in the formula box, and all formulas begin with an equal sign. you notice to the right of the formula box is this insert column box, which displays all the columns in this list. So for this formula, I want to subtract the estimate column from the actual column. To reference the actual column in the formula, I just double click on the column name in the column box. It adds it to the formula surrounded by the square brackets. I want to subtract from the actual column the estimate column, so I follow the reference to the actual column with a minus character. And then I double click on the estimate column name to add that to my formula. So my formula is complete. Then I can select how the results of the calculation are displayed, and I would like them displayed as currency. Then I can select the number of decimal places and I will select two. I do want this new column added to the default view of the list and then I'll choose OK to save. So you can see the new cost variance column was added to the list, results indicating amounts over or under the estimated amounts. We actually have one that is under the estimated amount. For our second example, we're going to take a look at calculating with dates. And for this example, we'll be working in the training site. We'll be adding a calculated column to the training documentation library. The training group likes to review their training materials at least once a year to keep them current. So we will add a document review date column. This column will display a review date that is calculated as a year from the last time it was updated. To calculate the review date, we will reference the modified column, which records the date the file was last updated. Then add 365 days to that modified date. So to add the new column, click on the Library tab, and then click on Create Column. Type in the name for this new column, called Document Review. Then I'll select Calculated as the type of column. And I'll click in the formula box to start the formula. Again, all formulas must begin with the equal sign. And as I just mentioned, we're going to take the modified date column and add, to represent with a plus sign, 365 days to that date. As you can see, when calculating with dates, you must break it down to number of days. I would like to see the result of the calculation displayed as a date and I do want to add it to the default view. And I'll click OK to save. And you'll see the document review column added to the list with all the dates reflecting one year out from the modified date. So if a document gets updated, which would automatically change the modified date, the document review date will also automatically be recalculated. To demonstrate that, I'll go in and make a change to this first document, which right now the last time it was modified was July 8th, and the review date is July 8th next year. So I'm going to open this document and change it. Okay, so I've just made a change to this document. 
That increased the date to today's date, July 27th, and the date for the review has changed as well to July 27th next year. For our third example, manipulating text in a formula, we're going to be working with the employee directory. So click on Browse here and then click on the employee directory. In the directory, the first and last names are in separate columns, which is standard for all contact lists. For display purposes, we will create a calculated column that will join the contents of those two columns into one. To get started, I'll click on the List tab and then Create Column. I'll call this column Full Name. The type of column is Calculated Column. I'll start my formula in the formula box with the equal sign like the other formulas. Our formula will add the contents of the first name column and last name column with a space in between. So our first reference in the formula is the first name column. I'll just double click on first name in the column list. After the first name we want to add the space. We can't use a plus sign like you do in mathematical formulas, so in a formula calculating with text, instead of the plus, we use the ampersand. In a text formula, when you want to reference text characters, they must be enclosed in double quotes. So after the ampersand, I'll indicate we're adding a space after the first name. After the space, we are going to add the last name. So I need to enter another ampersand and then reference the last name column. So at this point our formula is complete. It basically says to take the first name plus a space plus the last name. As far as the results, we do want it displayed as a single line of text. We do want it added to the default view, so I'll choose OK to save. And you'll see the new full name column added to the far right. The last thing we need to do is remove the first and last name columns from this view and move the full name column over to the left following the photo column. So to quickly do that, up on the ribbon bar we'll click on Modify View. In the Columns section here, I'll uncheck first and last name columns, and I want the full name column to follow the photo column, so I'm going to make full name column column number two. And then I'll choose OK to save. So you see the first and last name columns have been removed and the full name column was moved over to the left. So here you saw some examples of how you can use formulas in lists of libraries to calculate data in a variety of ways.